Hello and welcome to National Herald Interviews. This is Danish bin Nabi. I am joined by senior CPIM leader and People's Alliance for Gupkar Declaration spokesperson, Mr. Yusuf Mohammed Daregami. How Kashmir has changed since the abrogation of Article 370, the upcoming state elections of Jammu and Kashmir, and the overall security situation of Kashmir are some of the key issues that I shall raise with Mr. Daregami. Mr. Daregami, welcome to National Herald. Thank you. Mr. Taregami, I want to begin this interview by asking you how Kashmir politics, rather Jammu and Kashmir politics, has changed since the dilution of special status of Jammu and Kashmir. Are you still uh, talking about uh, dilution? It's not only dilution, it is beyond that. In my view, it's a assault on the very basic structure of the constitution of India. It's an assault on the very basis of our relationship, bond of relationship between the people of Jammu and Kashmir and the Union of India. So one can easily understand what by assaulting the constitutional rights, by assaulting the very basic structure of the constitution, what kind of uh, situation you will expect to emerge out of this whole process? It is devastation. Such an act, such an approach has only resulted in further deepening, not only the alienation, but virtually disappointment. So there is an overall disappointment in Jammu and Kashmir? It's not a question of overall. I'm telling you at every level there is huge disappointment. Even in those sections of the population which seem to be favoring such an assault or such a, such a step by the government of India, look to Jammu, look to Ladakh and Kargil now. Yesterday only, the Buddhist organization of Leh and the representatives of Kargil, Muslim majority area, joined together and seeking now, uh, restoration of statehood, seeking uh, the permanent residency rights which they enjoyed pre-40, this uh, 5th August 2019. But that means what? They are not even satisfied now. But did, didn't they uh, support the abrogation of special That's what I am telling you. I am telling you even those sections of the population who felt that something good may emerge out of this assault. Even they are dissatisfied. What about those sections of the population, like Kashmir, like many good sections of the population in Jammu region, who have been demanding more rights for their own uh, community of people here, as 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 uh, worked out by the constitutional order, but. Instead of granting more autonomy, instead of granting more and more rights to the people of Jammu and Kashmir, what this order has done is even assaulting whatever little we were getting out of those promises made by the successive governments, even those things have been abolished. Now that will result only in what? Huge disappointment, huge disillusionment, and huge frustration as well, which is quite obvious. Has the bifurcation of Jammu and Kashmir helped in any manner? And how do you see, how would it, uh, what repercussions it would have the, on the larger Kashmir question, the bifurcation of Jammu You see, Kashmir. I will tell you one thing. Uh, we, have, we have settled, I believe, that there is constitution of India surviving, despite all odds, despite all assaults. Now, let's go to the provisions, through the provisions of the constitutional order. Constitutional order says that whenever some certain states, new states are to be created, or some division takes place, that issue will be referred to the respective population, respective civil society, respective legislature. Has this been done here? What has happened? Our historic state was divided. And we all, Jammu, Kashmir population, irrespective of our uh, affiliations, there was a huge clamp down, huge arrests took place. Even this communication structures were snapped. Snapped. 
and even a patient could not contact his doctor where was the press where was the media to report anything about what is happening on the ground there was no communication at all this was not only lockdown it was a crackdown on entire society which is a factual statement so tell me that you are discussing parliament is discussing something about me and putting me under crackdown lockdown with How? without taking you on board that, without not only taking me on By board but you but, i mean but, the entire but, state but virtually virtually the stakeholders of the state virtually virtually creating a situation where we have been all of us have, as a society have been uh, uh, put together in a larger prison so this is what it is what the reality is you are also the spokesperson of people's alliances which is for the gupkar declaration so how is opposition parties taking this up with the center you know the first of all i must tell you the alliance has emerged on 4th august 2019 when there were huge rumors about something, something is happening is happen. something is happening when yatra was stopped stopped when tourists were today they are talking about tourism and all that it is on that day 4th august even Third before august, yeah. tourists were forced to leave the leave kashmir and leave other parts of jammu and kashmir it is at that point that we met we the political persons from mainstream parties even those those groups who are not now part of gupkar declaration gupkar alliance we met at dr farooq's residence and issued a statement adopted a declaration what is the declaration the declaration is that we can't accept any change in the constitutional order vis-a-vis jammu and kashmir we can't expect anything being done about us without involving us in the proper way in discussion and in debate and we have appealed to the prime minister of india through that declaration before you think of doing anything about jammu and kashmir please talk to the stakeholders of jammu kashmir and ladakh jumping to august 5th then they did this without taking you the stakeholders on board so the opposition parties are resisting it are resisting the move yes are you surely that is what we are doing what we but, are meant for but they, they call you the gupkar gang now whatever you see the you can abuse me you can accuse me you can condemn me you are the master of the uh, the day you are holding the power you can you can abuse the whole community yeah, of the people mr. of tarikam, india mr tarikam you tell me this is bjp has bjp been, been successful in discrediting the kashmiri leadership the kashmiri political stakeholders how do you believe that bjp has the credit? i don't believe it i am asking no, you no my point is how do you how do how does anybody believe that bjp has the credibility which is uh, which uh, we may question they don't have anything uh, as of uh, being credible and how can this organization this setup this structure which is only relying on more and more lies spreading hatred spreading divisive politics in the whole of the country how do you expect them succeeding in discrediting the politicians in discrediting us they are not masters they are discredited th- themselves they are whatever they are doing in today today situation in the whole of the country they are not indirectly only, they are discrediting themselves not the kashmiri politics not only they are they are already discredited in the sense now they are taking advantage of polarization putting one section of the people against another, another. Yeah. they are using they are using coercive organizations like nia like ed like cbi rather misusing such institutions to silence the opposition at every level it's not only in jammu and kashmir it is ever it is uh, m- more often happening in the rest of the country so kashmiri politicians kashmiri political stakeholders have not been discredited we will be discredited only when the people of kashmir decide about that and, and that is that's what i am telling you they are afraid of and you say the people of kashmir i mean to say people of jammu and kashmir are with you it's not a question of with me not the with you, is, i i mean to say with the pgd i i no it's not a question of whether they are for pgd or anybody the question is not question is something more important that is they are for the interests of the people of kashmir jammu and ladakh 
The Jammu people want their rights to be restored. Ladakh people want their rights to be protected. And Kashmiris have been struggling hard since long for a dignified life. So they cannot, it's not a question of discrediting us. If Tariq Ami gets here and there discredited, doesn't matter. But my people cannot be humiliated forever. My people cannot be discredited. You're That's saying my strong people, conviction. People, people matters. People have always, always matter. People will matter, shall matter. They may be, you may enforce silence today, but you can't, you can't just enforce this type of imposition Mr. forever. Mr. Taragami, point well taken. Let's move on. What's your view on the Delimitation Commission? Delimitation Commission is again, again an exercise which is absolutely unconstitutional. And it, it will have, uh, I hope, uh, I'm uh, not so sure that it will be anything, providing anything good for the country as a whole, democratic process. Now look, in 2002, there has been an amendment in the Constitution of India putting a freeze on delimitation process. And it has been said that 2026, a new uh, census will take place and after that, some sort of a delimiting the constituencies will be in order. That will take place only after that. We accordingly in Jammu and Kashmir Assembly amended the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir and wanted to do what? We wanted to go along with the country because the constitution of India was amended and there was a freeze on the delimitation process. We want to have the delimitation process conducted along with the rest of the country. Now this government is talking about integration. When we talk that we want to go with the people of India, rest of the country, they want, they push us to the wall. They say no, they are in hurry doing something which does not carry the conviction of the constitutional provisions of India. So you are saying it's the undemocratic way they have... Not only undemocratic, it is unconstitutional as well. As well. Point well taken, Mr. Taragami. Since July 2018, Jammu and Kashmir Assembly has been in the suspension mode, which is unusual as well as undemocratic as well. Do you see elections happening anytime soon in Jammu and Kashmir? It's not in suspension. It is no wire assembly. You see, Please just have a few seconds about this issue. Uh, when there was an alliance between the two parties and then governors issued presidential order and accordingly it was put under suspended animation. Suspended animation. It was not dissolved. What is suspended animation? Means that there is a possibility of forming a new alliance, forming a new government, exploring those possibilities. But what happened? When some political parties together wanted to move, to form the government, to explore the possibilities, the facts of the governor's house was not in order. And then next day when it was dissolved, the assembly was dissolved, all the facts came into order. However, what, you see, you understand the approach of the, those who are in authority, Actually, the designers are, they don't want to have a legislature here. And whatever the incident, whatever has happened later on, that has confirmed, that has our, our assertion, our suspicions, that they wanted to dissolve the assembly and then assault the constitution itself. Mr. Taregami, many believe, many political pundits believe that Kashmir is a police state. And has it been worse since 2019? I am telling you, the, what, is the, what is police state? Even, even now, those people who, are, who have been earlier in authority, even those experts who have been dealing with the Kashmir situation since long, they are of this opinion that there is a hard security approach be, adop, being adopted by today's government. And they are of this opinion that there is no connect of the administration with the common people on the ground. Virtually they are suggesting it is disconnected and they say it is dangerous as well. So it's not me only, it is, there are vices within, within the overall structure of the, of the country. They are of this opinion that enough is enough. 
the rise of violence, the incidents which are taking place, some unfortunate incidents, unarmed people are getting killed. So they are concerned about it and they suggest that it is because, mainly because of the disconnect of the people with the authorities which are in command. So there is a disconnect in Kashmir between authorities, those who are in command and the common people. That's obvious. That is all of us. Um, that's the reality of the is, day. Is this the, one of the reasons that these, all these killings we, we see? The rise in the killings? You see, it's not the question of this may be the only reason. There may be some other elements who may like to exploit the situation. I don't agree with that. Killing an artist, unfortunate, condemnable. Killing off the uh, duty a, a police constable, unfortunate. Killing a, a Kashmiri pundit. And now then, then killing somebody from Turk Wang home. He is unarmed and killed by, allegedly killed by those who are supposed to protect the law. So the point is that it is an unfortunate situation. And this situation is, has emerged because of one of the reasons is huge disconnect of the administration with, with the, the common, common people. people. Yes. So what is the role in the larger, in this large, larger context, what is the role of parliament and Supreme Court to address the grievances in Kashmir? You see, we have settled, 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 we uh, have hope about Supreme Court. That's why we have knocked the doors of the Supreme Court. We have challenged these orders which have been arbitrarily uh, imposed on us by, the, by today's uh, government. Uh, whether it is uh, abrogation of the autonomy, whether it is uh, virtually dividing our ranks or downsizing our status, or, or, or abrogating or uh, just, just, uh, uh, demolishing the land rights as well. Uh, we were having land rights uh, that act also, and we were having certain institutions here. A big institution, you know, some, some people are not talking. The result of it was, that is the constitution of Jammu and Kashmir itself. That too has been abolished without any consent, without any consultation with the stakeholders. So my point is, it is a huge, huge wild has been created. Huge wild has been created. It will be detrimental. It is dangerous for the unity of the country. It is dangerous for the future of the people of Jammu, Kashmir and Ladakh also. There are, uh, Mr. Taragami, there are also reports that government of India uh, would neither recognize nor give jobs to those students, those Kashmiri students who have studied in Pakistan, like many have done MBBS from that country, from the neighboring country. Would it have an adverse effect on ground in Kashmir? No, at least, you see, it is adversely affecting those families and those students, naturally. Otherwise, I, you tell me, they have gone there through a passport and they have not gone, crossed the border illegally and joined the institutions there. They have adopted, they have gone there through a process as they are going to Bangladesh, as they are going in other countries. Why should you punish those students? They have just gone not to pick up the arms, not to do something illegal. They have gone to study there. So it would have an adverse effect, obviously. Naturally. Sir, there is a huge uh, influx of tourists. And it's also reported that around 8 lakh pilgrims may be visiting Kashmir Amarnath Yatra this year. Is it a one of the means or methods of showing a normalcy in Kashmir. No, What's not, your take on it? No, no. You see the question, you can't just uh, uh, ignore uh, the major uh, factors which are here um, quite, quite seen to be operative in Jammu and Kashmir. Our business has been shattered. Got shattered because of this 5th August 2019. Job opportunities are becoming uh, are, are skeezing. Now you go through the record and when the people, people of uh, Kashmir, and they have always been, they have always been welcoming whether it is Yatra or, or tourists coming from the rest of the country. Take for example, good old days, even on 4th August, there was a huge number of tourists. In there Kashmir. was a Yatra. Going on, yeah. Going on. It's not something new that they have created. How unfortunate it is 
they are they are virtually um, uh, distorting the facts distorting the history itself so huge rush of the tourist is not an indication not of normalcy not at all not normalcy. at all it was on 4th august when they did it when and they clamped it down as well it is today as well and tourists have people of kashmir have always even hard days difficult days they have given them shelter in their own home so tourism amarnath yatra is not an have indication always, of normal situation have always been welcome even in hard days difficult days and because of the people cannot be taken as an indication it has never it has never been a point taken point taken tarik am sahib i'm running off time yes. very terribly my last question what is the way forward in kashmir the way forward is that government of india must take a view about what they have done i'm not talking i'm not seeking any favor not at all i'm seeking what is my that has to be provided to me you can't deny that arbitrarily dismantling the whole relationship between the people of jammu and kashmir and the rest of the country we want to be together we want to be together and for that rights which have been enshrined in the constitutional provisions by the constituent assembly itself restore those rights that the government of india it is better sooner the better it will be good for the country it will be good for the people of jammu and kashmir kashmiris are not begging we want terms on we want our rights on equal terms we are asking whatever is suggested or framed for us by those senior leaders freedom fighters by the founding framed, members of who india framed, who framed the constitution of india ambedkar pandit jawaharlal nehru rajendra prasad sardar patel maulana abul kalam azad kashmiris have never asked for anything which does not belong to them kashmiris have always asked for what is their legitimate right guaranteed under constitutional provisions they have always stood for a dignified life legitimate rights and dignified life yes that that's is that's what kashmiri wants that's the way forward and that's the only way forward yes sir mr tarakami pleasure talking to me thank you thank you